A wild day in the markets, especially for those in the reflation trade. In today's video, we're going to really discuss if this is just a shakeout that we've seen or if it is a rotation, which everyone is talking about. So we're going to be talking about one, if tech is the place to be, or is this just a buy on dip that we're seeing with some economic sensitive sectors? My name is Michael Silva. You're watching the Daily Stock Market Brief Show. This is the show that we do Monday through Friday, five days a week. We use technical analysis, intermarket analysis to get a good idea as to where the market might be headed next. Got some good stuff to talk about today, so let's just hop into it. All right, everybody, welcome back. We're going to first start off looking just at the market dashboard, looking at the 11 sectors. So today, take note, okay, the FOMC meeting was just yesterday. This could be very well a knee-jerk reaction. We're starting to see tech move higher as the 10-year yield reshook off its gains from yesterday and headed lower. So tech was a beneficiary. He uh, healthcare was also doing really good these last couple of days, and it actually looks good from an absolute perspective as well. Utilities creeping on that board too, which is more of a defensive play. Meanwhile, down at the bottom, the four red ones, industrials, materials, financials, and energy. Now, this is interesting because these have been the ultimate just massive winners since November of last year. These have been just gaining a massive amount of steam. They've been going, they've been the, the highest and wellest performing sectors. And now we're starting to see a very big shakeout. Okay, so the question is, okay, is this the rotation or is this just a shakeout? Well, we'll get into some more charts as time continues. Now, keep in mind, we're still looking at the seasonality chart as a possibility where we see a bigger pullback in June than a rally into July. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. From a bullish perspective, though, looking at the SPY on the 15-minute time frame, this little inverse head and shoulder right here can very well propel us to all-time market highs. And that would make sense coming into Friday. We typically see those VIX crushes happen on Friday, but you want to wait for confirmation, a break above that 423, and then we can be off on our merry little way um, to see if that does really just play out. Now, mind you, we just had the FOMC meeting. Oh, this is, this is a lot. It almost seems like the alg algos are in control right here. So you've been seeing a lot of crazy, crazy price action. All right. So um, it's it's just something really to, to be very mindful of. We're not going to really understand uh, where we're heading until next week and probably a couple of days into it. And the reason why is because one, the FOMC meeting, so we're seeing these knee-jerk reactions, then we have Quadwitch and OPEX tomorrow. So the market is going to be stumbly. It could be just pinned into short range, but there's the valid valid reason why it could head lower or break out to all-time highs. Um, and something that I'll call out too on the BP chart, this chart here is moving already into oversold territory, which means a couple of things. Excuse me, my mouse is all working weird. This right here is typically where I start to look for buy signals. So we're here. That means typically I'm looking for long positions in the S&P 500 or various stocks. However, just to take note, just because it's down here, it doesn't mean that it immediately goes back right back up. It can get overextended and it could stay there for periods of time. So we just, we need to be mindful of that. Now, uh, you know, this RSI readings at, what is it at 29.14? So it is underneath the 30 and we're still relatively high here on the BP chart. So 70% of stocks in the S&P 500 are on buy signals based off of these point and figure charts. So it's something to pay attention to and it's something to be well aware of. Meanwhile, if we look at breath, breath is not quite overextended to the downside, uh, but it is getting there. So you can see here when it gets to around minus 40, we've seen some spikes. Now I would like to see a stronger reading down to the downside. So minus 60 to even minus 80. And that would say to me, okay, now let's really start looking for a long position. You take that into consideration and you get this to even more overextended territory. Now we're looking really good for some hedge longs. We're not there yet. Now, why have we seen materials really take it on the chin today? Well, we'll be getting into like uh, the materials portion. We'll get into financials too and technology, um, why we've been seeing that rise. Uh, some interesting charts. Now, first off, um, if, if you don't know about what's been taking place, the Chinese government agency announced a plan on Wednesday to release reserves of key metals, including copper and aluminum, according to Reuters. Now, Reuters, Reuters, I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, so this was a big, big thing that took place. And you can see when they announced it, well, we're starting to see this week to date performance from CNBC. Well, look at look at corn taking a big hit, which which that's not the point that I was going for. But gold, copper, silver, platinum, all very, very weak performance month to date. Now, in my personal opinion, this is like, first off, you got to think, okay, so 
the Fed hints at potentially raising a little bit of rates in a, in a couple of years. And the market is responding in this way. To me, I mean, it doesn't make much sense, right? So I, from a personal perspective, I just don't see that the inflation trade is going to be obliterated. I think that this is a big head fake. It could continue to head a little bit lower, but I ultimately think that the inflation trade will continue. The reflation trade will continue. When I look at copper, copper has taken a big hit. I'm in a copper position. I'm not getting rid of it. It's relatively small position according to my portfolio or position to my portfolio. But if you look at this big drawdown here in copper, it is coming right into its yearly uh, anchored VWAP, which is a very important area to be mindful of. Now, if it starts breaking down through that, I'd be a little bit more cautious um, going forward. But as it stands right now, we did find a little bit of support and you saw a little bit of a bounce up. So you, one has to wonder, okay, so China's, a, they, 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 they use an incredible amount of copper and they still need copper. So if they're starting to release the reserves, eventually they're going to have to buy it back. Are they going to announce when they're buying it back? Probably not, perhaps, but it's probably going to be too late. So on this specific um, trade right here, I still personally think it's a buy on dip um, in various uh, miners and various um, commodities as well. Meanwhile, oil has been holding up quite well, but we did see a little bit of a drawdown today. If you look at the yields, this is where it gets kind of interesting. We saw the drawdown here in the 10 year, but it's still within this channel. So that's one thing to take note. Meanwhile, this little inverse head and shoulders on the TLH, we did hit the target and we headed lower closing back within that channel. A little bit of a inverted hammer, but perhaps we start heading lower, which drives this right back up. Like I said, this is could be just a head, this could be just head fakes. Right now it's still relatively calm in that channel. Um, another thing to pay attention to, while the 10 year was heading lower, obviously we had the NDX heading significantly higher. We talked about that hammer candle. We broke through to all time highs. That looks pretty good. We're still under this little level of resistance. And I want to be mindful of this divergence also from the new high, new low index. You can see here from a high to lower highs as we're pressing higher here. So let's continue on because I'm going to be getting more into this whole rotation thing. Um, kind of my concerns and then also uh, my beliefs too as well. Uh, another thing that I want to call out here is the NYSE did do a trend break. Okay, this is a broad market index. That's, you know, that's a little bit of a warning sign right there. This trend break that took place, that could be the start of something bigger. We won't really know until we start taking out the low here at 16,000. Meanwhile, that negative divergence that we called out did play out. I'm starting to look, see if the, the, the reading can get lower, and then I'd be looking for playing some sort of a bounce. Meanwhile, talking about the NYSE, right? It could potentially reconnect with the monthly five EMA. That's at 15,898. And if I go back to this chart here, 15,898 would bring us to right around this low. Okay, so that area is, is previous support and we're in confluence with the monthly five EMA. So reconnect there and an overextended reading down here would make sense for a pivot point. Just saying. Um, another thing I wanna call out is the asset managers. What are they doing? This to me, from a contrarian standpoint, is a little concerning. Uh, we're back at full at bull mode. Now look at this, at 98.52 reading. So that means we're exposed to downside risk. Um, heavily. Okay. And when it gets to these high readings or even above 100 when it's leverage in the system, that means that, you know, all asset managers are extremely bullish in these conditions. Meanwhile, if you look at the Rydex, look how bullish this is um, 0 0.07. That is just saying to us that uh, it's just, it's full bull mode here. And this, this type of readings tells me, yeah, there's just a lot of exposure to risk. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's something to be very, very mindful of. At this 0 0.07, I don't think I've ever seen a reading that low ever. Um, I'd have to go and check, but I'm almost certain that this is the bullish that the, the market has been there, um, according to the right X and then looking at the asset managers too. It, I've seen it higher, but that's relatively um, getting pretty uh, euphoric. Um, yeah, I guess would be the word. Lumber to gold ratio continues to head lower not below zero as of now, but if we cross through that tomorrow, we're in a risk off week going into next week. Gold, you can see, has been just completely nosediving here. That's a big drop. Now, this is one reason why we're potentially thinking that, okay, maybe maybe this was just a big head fake bull trap right here, and then we're heading lower. You know, it's very early to tell, and what we were looking at was this 26-day cycle, and every time it runs into this 26-day cycle, you typically see turning points, and it matched perfectly. As we've been stating in previous videos, that was a very big turning point. 
Hey, this this to me is fine. That nothing's too bad with this. However, if we start heading towards these lows, 1680, then I'm a little bit more concerned with this uh, recent, obviously, run up right here. So this is a pretty significant move. We're getting to that oversold area. I can imagine we can see some sort of a bounce, but it has a lot of repair work to do to recover from that type of uh, a downside move. Meanwhile, silver, we were talking about that channel. We did crack down through it. It started going sideways. That was the break today right into the 200 day moving average on some pretty solid volume. So just be aware of that. I'm still within relatively an area of previous resistance slash support here. So yeah, maybe we hit a little bit lower, um, but still in the grand scheme of things here, it's been tracking sideways since August of last year. And if we look at lumber, lumber is continuing to go um, south. The 200-day moving average is right around 851 here, and we are getting to that oversold territory. Perhaps we get a bounce, but perhaps not. I mean, this stuff has been just falling completely through the floor. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The dollar. This is what we really need to understand, and this and this will lead us into yields too. Okay, this is these are the important things to watch. Uh, the dollar as it breaks out. Obviously, we're seeing this reflation trade. Uh, uh, fall apart. Um, now, the dollar move up. We've been talking about this inverse head and shoulders, the falling wedge. It did move, um, and it could still potentially run up to 92.50, and we got to start watching at those levels up there if it wants to continue. This is a very aggressive move, so we need to know if this is if this is just, you know, just a quick little move, and then it's going to start falling back down to 90 coming into next week. This is just because the FOMC meeting. This is just because, because of the quad witch, and, you know, it's just a um, and, and OPEX, we just have a lot of things going on this week. So perhaps this is the market, an episodic and non-trending type of move right here. That's what we need to pay attention to. As it stands right now, that big move, it is sending commodities down significantly. Oil's holding up for the most part, but um, also also we've been seeing financials take it on the chin a little bit too. Meanwhile, the S&P 500, you can see here, has not been seeing the negative effects that it typically does. When you see this move down, you see the big move up. When we see the move up, you know, like this spike right here, we saw it move down, but we're getting a big move. And the S&P 500 is not responding to this move as of right now. And this could be potentially because the S&P 500 is being held up by these mega cap, potentially um, uh, rotation back into these uh, mega cap tech growth stocks. Now, from a weekly perspective, looking at the dollar, this could be an inverse head and shoulders. That's reaching a little bit, especially on a big, strong move like that. But we need to put it out there. If it does break that neckline, we can shoot up to 96, 97, 98 range for a measured move there. So be well aware. I don't know if it's going to get there. But however, we could potentially reach up to that 92.50 level. And that acts as a level of resistance, keeping that trend right there as resistance. And then we potentially drag lower. So we'll see what takes place with that. Let's hop into the indices, starting with the S&P 500. Uh, first off, it looked like a pretty bearish day to start. However, just a doji candle, right? So nothing. It's a lot of indecision as of right now. We managed to hold 4,200. 4,200 has been a key level. I think that if we break through 4,200, I think that we could come down and test this 100-day moving average. I think that because of how key this level is, you know, that's it's very possible. I, I've been noticing these drift higher, and then all of a sudden we get this slam down, and we're getting that same drift higher you know, and then this could be potentially an area where we get a move a little bit stronger down to the downside. I, it's not there yet, and we're in overall bullish context. What is interesting to me is the price percent oscillator did cross over to bearish, and there's a clear negative divergence there. We're, we're drifting higher, and this has just been losing momentum. So that to me is concerning, as well as not only the momentum or the price percent oscillator, you're looking at volume that's been dying off too. And now, uh, you know, when we started getting some heavier selling, volume started to increase. However, like I said, come tomorrow, even if we have a big update, we really need to understand next week to really get a good picture as to what might take place. Here's the S&P 500, the SPY on the 15 minute time frame. I showed you the five minute time frame and I showed an inverse head and shoulders. Here it's hard to see because it's a little bit more compressed. Um, the, it's below the five day moving average and it's starting to decline. So the bulls need to recapture that, recapture that 423.50. And if they do that, like I said, on the five minute chart, you know, 423, 423.50 is right up here. So that's previous swing high right there, this zone of resistance. If we start cracking above that, that would be good for the bulls. Now let's hop into the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, we talked already a little bit about, very strong day. Seems like we're rotating back into big tech. 
but just be mindful that these rising wedges, typically you can get overthrows. So just, just manage your risk on this specific trade. Overall, very bullish context. That big day did proceed with um, some decent volume too. So to me, that looks pretty good. Uh, as of right now. And if you look at the 15 minute time frame, it paints slightly a different picture, uh, but nothing too crazy. We have an inclining, inclining five day moving average, negative divergence, rising wedge here. So perhaps we do get an overthrow. I would be looking for a reconnect of this five day moving average. This move from the bottom here, that's a pretty aggressive move. So you wanna see it digest its gains. You wanna see it pull back and then potentially head higher. But if it continues, if we get like a big gap up, like that to me is, is a little bit of a concern. Uh, and the reason why is just because how aggressively it's moved from 338 to 346 without really taking a, a, a breath. Um, so moves like that, I would like to see the, the, the gains digested a little bit and then head higher. Dow Jones is the, uh, the laggard of the bunch. Here we have nine red candles in a row and we still haven't taken out the May low. That to me is interesting, but you can see here it's like slowly rolling over and then it's been picking up steam and increasing volume on the sell-off. So to me, this this says, hey, we can head lower. However, just just be mindful, you know, three three five hundred right here is an area of support. Um, so you know, it might try to bounce here. It's it's under under the five-day moving average, under the fifty, it's under the two hundred. So I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't look great as of right now. It's not nearly as good as the S and P five hundred or the Nasdaq. Now here's the DIA. I posted this on Twitter earlier. Falling wedge. We did break out of that. It was getting very overextended to the downside, and we saw the breakout and it moved higher on this little positive divergence. Now I just want to call out. Okay, well potentially it's flagging or a rising wedge right here down here. Um, like I said, I I don't know where the market's going to be opening. Um, I could probably take a look at futures here soon. Um, it's six o'clock and I'm recording this, but uh, look for a potential breakout and to see if it could potentially take out 336. That would be very bearish to me. Um, on the, the Dow Jones. But right now, as it stands, even if we head higher, still a declining five-day moving average. So it's not in the greatest of context. Russell to 1,000. We're looking at the IWM hammer candle right into right around the 50-day moving average and then bounce right back through to the 20-day moving average. Has some volume coming in. Price percent oscillator. Looks like it wants to do a bearish crossover. You know, it's it's hard to say on this one. It really is. But as it stands, it's in the bull's favor right here just because of the overall context of the chart. Meanwhile, it's really just been tracking sideways. We had the breakout of this trend. Now it's kind of reversing itself right here. You know, like I said, tomorrow might be bullish, but tomorrow might be a head fake going into the following week. Um, so like I said, don't, on, on Fed weeks, I'm never too, I'm never too aggressive. I think I put it on, I placed on like two trades, you know, uh, between the last two or three days. Um, so I've been relatively uh, light trading. Here's the IWM on the 15 minute time frame. Possibility for a bear flag, declining five day moving average. We've been closing below that. So that's also not a good sign. You wanna see that recaptured. This sell off right here was pretty aggressive. And then we have some resistance right at around 228.50. So we'll continue to monitor that, see how that plays out. Let's look into some sectors. This is where it gets interesting. I wanna call out the yields here. We've been talking about this rotation trade, okay? So first off, we have the 30 up top. I'm sorry. Yes, we have the 30 up top. We have the 10 year right here. Oh, do I? I didn't bring up the two. Did I bring up the three month? Okay, two year, five year. Okay, good. So what I want to really point out here is we have financials, okay? And we have XLK. And then we have some spreads. These spreads are important to watch, okay? This is, if the spreads break down, this is kind of putting the, the kibosh on the narrative of the reflation trade. You want to see, for example, the 30 to five, yeah, while it's breaking down these last two days, it's been two, two, two days, two or three days since this has been breaking down. And you're seeing that here in the yields. Look at the five-year yield, which is the purple spiking up. And then you see the 30-year heading lower. So the spread is flattening. And you could see that in the curve here, it is broken through this area of support. And now it could be, become a level of resistance. What is taking place when that happens? Well, look at financials. We cracked through a trend line and we had a very, very strong down move today. Okay, so financials do not like this. It does not like when the 10 verse twos head lower. It doesn't head, doesn't, it's not like when the, the 30 and fives head lower, the 530s or whatever you wanna call them. Meanwhile, if you look at technology, technology has been heading higher ever since the spread started flattening. And also if you just take a look at the 10 year as that has been just kind of trending lower then obviously too that the tech stocks like that. So this is concerning. If we got to pay very close attention to these spreads. 
And if you want to look at the 35 or the 10 2, it's, it's either or. But it's only been a very few days since this is breaking through. So, you know, you don't want to put too much weight on it. But as it stands right now, it says financials is not the place to be. And tech, potentially high shorted tech and various tech stocks are the place to be. And we're seeing technology stocks do really well, especially renewable energy. Um, I've been seeing some solar companies uh, start to base out and they're starting to see strength like TAN. Um, that's that's an ETF. So this is either one big fake out move or it's the start of something bigger, which puts the inflation trade at, at, at more of a reflation trade at more of a topping type thing. We're going to see things like various commodities start to head lower. So that is what I want to pay attention to. I want to pay attention to this spread, these spreads. I want to pay attention to the yields and pay attention to the dollar. Because um, as it stands right now, as these are breaking down, financials ain't looking good. However, to me personally, me personally, I do not think that it, this is over. I, I feel like just because this is the market reacting to uh, more hawkish Fed, and I don't, just don't think they're going to be doing anything. I don't think that they can. I think they're between this, you know, rock and a hard place that if they do actually start pressing rates higher, um, especially with the amount of debt in the system, it just, it's just going to wreak, wreak havoc. Uh, so we'll, like I said, it, my, my opinion, it doesn't really matter, but we need to continue to monitor that. Let's hop into the transports. This has been constantly getting hammered down to the downside as well. We had a low of 14.72 five just slightly below that and if you look at the monthly time frame the ema is at 14591 so we are pulling into that monthly five ema that to me this is fear just heading lower and lower everyone's like no get out of here uh but meanwhile the monthly five emas have been acting as support and if you look at this from a longer term trend it's still in a lot of bullish context now the month isn't over Okay, the month is not over by any means, but you can also see that this sell off so far is not on that high of volume, which tells me if it's low conviction sellers. But like I said, this is a monthly time frame and it's only July, June 17th. That can change. That can change very quickly, but we got to look for these pivots. All right, semiconductors, a lot of chop, a lot of confusion. Just be careful here, but bulls favor above the five day inclining moving average. Uh, the BKX. I want to just call out here too, a lot of fear. The BKX is the banking index. You, When we're seeing the spreads break down, that has not been good for the financials. And you can see here now, what I want to call out here is once again, we are pulling into the monthly EMA. So we're seeing a lot of fear. However, we need to pay attention to pivot points. So we are overall in a very bullish trend and we're getting aggressive pullback. Now we have the 5EMA that can act as a pivot point, but then we have previous resistance, uh, resistance and resistance here, and they could potentially act as support. What I find interesting about these levels, this was the, the resistance at the, uh, the top of the financial crisis. This was the resistance right here during the repo, um, stuff that was going on in 2017 into 2018. And this right here was the pandemic. So can this area act as a support or was this a bull trap right here and we're gonna head lower? It's too early to tell, but from a trading perspective and taking action perspective, this pullback makes for a buy on dip opportunity because you can manage your risk relatively easily. Now, the only downside is it's on a declining five day moving average. Yes, we have the positive divergence. We can get a bounce, but it would be like, it'd be nice to see this start kind of bouncing around and start having this five day moving average start to smooth out and then start to incline. Uh, the last chart I want to show is XLE. XLE also not the greatest day to day with all this stuff that came out. A lot of sellers stepped in that supports that volume. Bear, uh, bearish crossover on the price percent oscillator, but we're in overall a big bullish uptrend. So yeah, perhaps it's going to take some time to just recover this. Maybe we come down to the 50 day or previous area of support right here, and then we start to find our legs. But as it stands right now, yes, um, a pretty big down day, down 3.4%, the worst performing sector, uh, a lot of volume to support that move and a bearish crossover. So uh, it, it's, it's one of those things where we really have to see what takes place next week. Most of this stuff, and we'll wrap into the conclusion, most of this price action is all being based off of what we just came from the Fed, the FOMC meeting, and then also heading into Quad Witch and OPEX. Okay, so... You, you, you just can't just can't press anything too hard until this kind of cloud clears and we come into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and next week, I think is really going to set the stage as to where we might see the market head next. That's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Have a wonderful day.